All right, so this is my solar-powered Nest camera, and it's completely off the grid. Um, and what made it a fun project for me is it involved a little bit of everything that you know I like to do, a little bit of a little bit of light woodworking, some solar panels, which is you know simple in concept, but has always been a little bit of a mystery to me. And come around this way. Has some electronics and yeah, that's about it. And so here's the Nest camera. And now this is the other side. So this is my door that sits in here to keep the, the, the rain out and the wind out. But then so we'll just remove. And what we've got here is the solar panels. Are, the two wires come together and are wired together so that they stay at 12 volts but double my amps and you can see here it goes into the solar charge controller and so this is the solar charge controller and as you can see this is kind of the, the magic piece of it because we've got the controller the battery 12 volt battery and then this is now a converter from DC to AC because the Nest camera, at least as far as I could tell, has to run off of AC power. So we got, even though the actual camera I'm sure is DC, the plug is not. So go DC back to AC. And then also the last piece is just a hotspot that I had lying around and on a legacy plan. And so, and then finally the Nest camera, of course. And so what's cool about this is since the internet is a hotspot and it's powered by solar electricity, I can just move this thing anywhere on the property, anywhere. I can put it in the back of the truck and move it anywhere and it will work in a power outage, anything. So it makes an ideal camera to put at my front gate to monitor people coming in and out. And also, as you can see here, I've weighed it down with uh, some rocks. I'm probably gonna, once I finalize my position, I might dig some holes and pour some cement in it, but this, you know, is a nice way of keeping it from blowing over in the wind. And if you come here and look at the solar charge controller, you can see right now, if we click through, right now, 13.7, so the flashing light means it's uh, charging and the battery meter shows full and if we click a, uh, I believe tw yeah, twice so now we can see we're getting 0.7 amps from the solar panel to the battery and right now the um, hotspot plus the Nest Cam draw 0.6 amps and the Nest Cam is drawing about 0.4 amps and the hotspot pulls about 0.2 amps um, I just did this by unplugging. So here we have the Nest Cam power source, and then this is the charger for the hotspot. Even the hotspot is battery, it still has to stay charged. So I believe we can verify this. If we go here, you see uh, drawing 0.6 amps, and if I unplug the hotspot, yeah, it drops down to sometimes 0.4, sometimes 0.5. So the Nest camera is the big draw on here. I guess when this thing's charging more, it pulls a few more amps, but um, we can click it two more times, two more times and unplug the Nest camera. And we go to here and now it's 0.4. I guess part of the draw is also whether or not this converter here also takes power. There's a fan that comes on and off whenever it gets hot which is why I've got it mounted up and you, you want to make sure it has ventilation. So all together, I guess the, this also takes power. This plus this plus this. Nest cam plus hotspot plus the actual converter, inverter or converter itself take 0.6 amps. And also one of the um, things I did when I was constructing this is I wanted to make sure that um, you know, it was waterproof, and so what I did here is I mounted 
the, you know, I built everything so making sure when I drilled all the screws, I wouldn't drill a hole in the roof. So even when I mounted the, the roof afterwards, I got these brackets, the screws here that come, that mount the, the roof in, come only into these two by fours. And as you can see, if you look at the roof in here, there's no screws coming down from the roof, making, keeping it watertight. And over here, even on the solar panel side, these solar panels, they come with a mounting bracket, which is just some metal pieces. Obviously, you can have any of the small L brackets lying around, that would work. But all I did was I just took two pieces of plywood and then put some uh, multi-purpose glue. I can show the glue later. Um, took some glue on the back and then I just pasted it onto the onto the wood and then let it dry for a couple hours and then I just drilled the wood directly into the roof again making sure that the screws don't go on the inside you can see on the underside here there's the screw coming out so even if it leaks it leaks outside the box um, and that's and then I can take my door here and I've got such that it sits in there pretty nicely and then I can take my two little screws here yeah so I'm not screwing the, the nails into here I, the, these screws are just basically like latches holding back the door And you can see I have a couple other screws here at the bottom, just keeping it from being able to slip out. And similarly up here, when I pull this out, I just have two more screws here holding it so that when I push backwards, the board pushes up against those screws and doesn't fall in on itself. Here's the two by four construction. The left side's four feet high and the right side's five feet high. And then I cut the plywood the diagonal piece is a little bit tricky, but then you fix it to the side. Now that you've got a frame. And then the other side, then you have the two shelves, the horizontal pieces. Here I had to cut out a little cross shape at the bottom to fit into the plywood. And then we add the roof and the solar panel. And add all your wiring. And then finally do your door. And okay, so these are all the tools I used. Um, First, we've got this uh, nice rotary saw by, by Makita, battery powered and brushless. It's an amazing saw, lasts a long time, really lightweight, easy to use. Um, and what I end up doing a lot of times is I just use, put it off the end of my pickup and put a rock on the end for longer pieces and then you just measure the Sharpie where you want and then you can line up and just with your saw you go through like this and you get a nice straight cut because this is square with that. Um, and then also by Makita, same, this impactor is an amazing impactor. It is really nice for screwing in screws because it hammers them in and it uses the same battery as the rotary saw. And then the screws I use, you can use just about anything, but I used these, uh, one inch number six screws for putting all the plywood in so that it wouldn't stick out too much because the plywood's nice and thin. And then for joining all the two by fours, I used a number three screw, I mean a three inch screw. Um, and this makes sure since your two by four is one and a half inches thick, since your two by four is one and a half inches thick and three and a half inches wide, this allows you to join two pieces of uh, two by four really nicely. You don't really want to go less than two and a half inches when joining two by fours. Um, and then this uh, is this, the multi-purpose glue by Loctite that I used to join the solar panels to the wood. Um, can use on just about anything. Work, it's been working out pretty good. And then for the Electricity, electrics, um, a pair of wire cutters just makes your life a lot easier. Um, stripping off all the sheeting because you want to cut 
the wire to length and then rejoin it with these you know, really nice electric caps. This is just the easiest way of joining any electric wire. And this is the orange cap that I used to join. Blue ones are slightly smaller, red ones are slightly bigger. And then obviously just screwdriver for connecting the stuff, um, you know, for all the screws on the solar power controller, all those screws on electronics, you don't want to use power drill, you always want to tighten them by hand. And then uh, Leatherman, always really nice because it has a really nice pair of pliers. Because when you strip wires, what you can do is you can put the wire through there, clamp it, and go like this, and then wedge it off and it comes off really nice. And then the knife on the Leatherman, if you haven't used it before, the knife comes out really easy and this is a very sharp durable knife pretty much indestructible and always zip ties for zipping together any excess wire you can also use rubber bands or hair ties that's it